Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Pints with Jack Skype sessions. Now, on a previous episode of this podcast, we had Justin Briley from Premier Christian Radio on to talk about his podcast and his book called Unbelievable. And today on this Skype session, we have one of Justin's UK colleagues, Ruth Jackson. She's here to talk to us about what Matt and I have affectionately been calling the other C.S. Lewis podcast. <laughs> Ruth Jackson, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Can you just kick things off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. So um, I studied theology at Oxford, so have very much been in the pub quite a few times that you are currently sat in. I'm saying sat in <laughs> in inverted commas, uh, the Eagle and Child, and um, obviously sort of frequented all of Lewis's and Tolkien's jaunts while I was in Oxford um, and actually studied under Alistair McGrath. Um, as well. So he was actually the principal of the college that I was studying at. Uh, so that's kind of my background in terms of theology and things like that. Uh, I have been an unbelievable. I started in the pandemic, so it's always hard to <laughs> figure time. out where you were because who, yeah, who knows what day we're even in. Um, but I was working uh, for Premier Youth and Children's Work magazine, um, which is part of Premier before that. So I've been I've been sort of part of the Premier stable probably for the best part of five years um, before that at the Oxford Centre for Christian Apologetics, again, working quite closely with Alistair McGrath. Um, and then before that, I was at the BBC. So completely different, working in children's television. So <laughs> that's a little potted history of how I ended up doing what I'm doing. You're definitely right. COVID time is different. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife and I will technically be celebrating our first wedding anniversary in three months. But this has been during COVID. So I'm just calling it maybe third or fifth year of I marriage. Think so. I think so. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I will drink to that. Thank you very with, much. With Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. So what are you drinking? Well, I'm actually seven months pregnant, so it would be very remiss of me to be drinking actual <laughs> beer. So it's a non-alcoholic non beer and it's brew dog nanny state, but it is obviously alcohol free. Um, so I feel a little bit like a borrower because this is the largest <laughs> tank in the world. Um, but that is what I'm drinking. It's, it's a bit dark for me, to be honest. I'm much more of a lager person, really. But, you know, it's a proper kind of English ale. And I feel like we're talking about one of the English great so it'd be rude not to yes you have to really represent uh, i'm not sure if the borrowers ever made it over to the u.s uh oh, for, gosh, yeah. for for u.s watchers they were these tiny little people that live in your house and borrow things from you uh mm -hmm. the book series is wonderful i can't even remember who wrote it no, no i can't remember either but well, it's brilliant go and it, check yeah. it out <laughs> Now, one thing that you missed out in your potted history, uh, the daisy chains. I have been oh, listening to them all morning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things I do when I'm not um, stuck in lockdown, although we did we did do an online festival right at the beginning of the pandemic, but I'm in an all girl rock and roll band. So it's sort of 50s, 60s rock and roll. So lots of Elvis, Little Richard, Carol King, things like that. And I'm the bassist in the band. So that's pretty fun. And that's sort of my creative outlet when I'm not thinking about big, deep theological things. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so you're the co-host of a new C.S. Lewis podcast on Premier Christian Radio. What's your own history with Lewis? I knew you would ask me this and I knew I would have to admit my sort of slightly checkered history with C.S. Lewis. So I grew up like I suppose most British children um, watching the BBC series of Narnia um, yes. every Sunday afternoon, I think it was. And it started with a wardrobe opening and that amazing do 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 tune <laughs> and um, <laughs> Terrible, terrible CGI, but just amazing depiction of the Narnia stories. The most terrifying baddie with with the queen, um, the white witch. Just, I'm still terrified of her even now looking at those things. Um, and I read all of the stories as a child and absolutely loved them. Was completely mesmerised by Aslan and all of the characters in the Narnia story. So loved, 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 loved his fiction. Um, and then really tried to get into his non-fiction. Um, I think particularly when I was studying theology at university and grappling with lots of big questions, um, particularly around suffering and things like that, uh, I turned to Lewis and just found him really difficult, if I'm honest. I think perhaps I should have been reading him with like a pencil underlining and really concentrating. And I think a lot of the time I tried to read him 
you know, on a beach or not really concentrating. And I just found him quite hard work. So that's that's my full disclosure uh, that I found him quite difficult to start with. And then I was actually working for the Oxford Centre for Christian Apologetics with Alistair McGrath um, when he wrote this amazing. Where are we? I've got it here. This amazing sort of seminal autobiography of C.S. Lewis um, called C.S. Lewis A Life. And um, I was meant to be helping Alistair sort of do the promotion of this book. So I thought I probably should read it. And actually, um, this is going to sound really corny, but it was reading that book by Alistair McGrath that really made me kind of fall in love with C.S. Lewis again and think, actually, I need to give him the time of day. So that sort of sent me back to a lot of Lewis's nonfiction. Um, and I must admit, I only recently read Mere Christianity and your podcasts helped enormously. <laughs> um, so that's one of the things we've just recently recorded with Alistair McGrath is a whole series on Mere Christianity. Um, but sitting down with a pencil and really concentrating oh my goodness, it's absolute gold, isn't it? It's one of those books where you sort of quoted bits of it for years and perhaps never even realised that it came from Mere Christianity. But I just found myself yeah falling in love with Lewis again and just thinking there is so much wisdom in here and obviously there are, you know there are difficult things and you know language barriers and it's it's of its time but gosh so much so much wisdom and it's definitely one I will be going to again and again so yeah that's that's my full disclosure wasn't a fan became a fan now fully fully in <laughs> <laughs> One of the pieces of advice I give regarding Lewis repeatedly is to read him slowly. Uh, mm -hmm. And as you say, with a with a pencil in hand really helps. Mm -hmm. All of my books are marked up. Uh, and actually, I'd say that's one of the things that makes him perfect for a podcast because you can take things piecemeal. Uh, yeah. Now, you've mentioned your co-host a few times now. Can you tell us a little bit more about him? Yeah, so Alistair McGrath is the Andrios Idrios Professor of Religion and Science at Oxford University. Which How many times <laughs> did you have to practice that before you could say that properly? Yeah, I, I sort of just went for it the first time and I said to him, is that right? And he said, yes. So I don't know whether he was just being polite or whether, um, yeah, whether that is the correct way of saying it. But basically, he sort of heads up this kind of inter discussion of religion and science and sort of how that all plays together. Um, but he spent years and years and years as a theology professor at Oxford before that. And he spent some time at uh, King's University in London and Cambridge University. He's got three PhDs um, in science and theology. And uh, he is is honestly one of the biggest brains you will ever ever encounter he is a fiercely fiercely intelligent man um, and has always loved C.S. Lewis lots of affinities with C.S. Lewis he grew up in Northern Ireland he um, studied at Oxford University he sort of then went on to Cambridge so there's lots of sort of affinities with C.S. Lewis's life which um, I don't know whether that was part of why he's so interested in Lewis but he sort of sees a lot of himself and Lewis and I think probably the most significant similarity with Lewis is that he came to faith when he was at Oxford University um, in a similar way to Lewis and he had quite a kind of academic conversion I suppose by looking at some of the proofs for various bits and pieces started out as an atheist um, and actually he really attributes a lot of C.S. Lewis's writings to um, sort of helping him along the way. There were, there were lots of things along Alistair McGrath's journey, but, but Lewis certainly helps. And he sort of talks about him as his kind of unofficial mentor. So he was obviously the perfect choice when we were thinking about a podcast about C.S. Lewis. Uh, Matt also studied at Oxford and he was reading Mere Christianity along Alison's Walk and that was a sizable part of his own return to Christianity. Wow. Some, so, something about that area, clear, clearly bathed in something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, what was, that, what was the motivation behind creating a C.S. Lewis podcast? I mean, if I knew Alistair McGrath, I would absolutely suggest <laughs> let's do a C.S. Lewis podcast. <laughs> uh, but were there any other reasons why you chose to do this in particular? It's a great question because it was kind of a decision that was out of my hands. Um, Premier had sort of already decided to do it before they asked me to host it. So I can't sort of second guess exactly why, but I would imagine it was because C.S. Lewis is such a prolific mind. And as you say, it lends itself so well to a podcast because there's so much to unpack. 
Um, and we've sort of done series over the years of on various theologians. Um, and uh, I'm sure we must have done various programs about C.S. Lewis. But just the idea of let's do a whole podcast because there's so much to unpack. And I think, it, you know, he's so significant for so many people, as you say, you know, with Matt, your co-host. But I, I, I know so many people who came to faith through C.S. Lewis, whether it was mere Christianity or the fiction or sort of came back to faith. And so I think just unpacking some of those ideas and and things like that. And, and again, um, yeah, I'm sure they must have thought of other people that could have um, done it before they uh, well, I would imagine Alistair was the first choice, but I'm sure they would have had kind of a few people on the table. But for me, Alistair McGrath was absolutely the the first and only choice because he is such an expert and it just flows out of him. You know, you could ask him about any aspect of C.S. Lewis and he would tell you he did so, so much research for this book. He went to kind of libraries all over the world and and read so much unpublished material. And um, yeah, he is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to C.S. Lewis. I, I must admit, when they asked me to host it, I was a bit like, do I tell them? Do I tell them that I've never read Nick Christianity? Do I tell them that I, I love his fiction, but I'm not convinced about his? Um, but, you know, I sort of I did. I put all my cards on the table and, and told them my, my little journey with C.S. Lewis. But actually, I think in some senses they thought that would be good because because there are there are obvious C.S. Lewis fans. But there are also people who were a little bit like me, I guess, slightly on the periphery. Uh, and then there are probably people who've never encountered C.S. Lewis before. So I suppose having someone who is um, very much an expert and a total superstar in Alistair McGrath and someone who is very much a total amateur and clearly knows nothing in me um, it is kind of a good marrying and, and bringing it together. So hopefully we're a good combination. <laughs> On this podcast, I always make a point of telling people not to use the word amateur as, 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 like, a, as like a bad title. Amateur mm -hmm. literally means one who loves. Well, and there we go. <laughs> I would hope that all scholars are also amateurs. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, on to some practical details. Uh, where can people find the podcast? What's your release schedule? And what are the kinds of things that you talk about on it? So we released a couple of weeks ago and then unfortunately we had a couple of te technical difficulties where it didn't launch properly on a few different platforms. So it was a bit of a hiccupy start. Um, but if you go to cslewispodcast.com, it will have all of the information about sort of the different platforms that you can subscribe on. There's a trailer there. There's the first two episodes. So they, they're going to release every Monday hopefully as long as there's no technical issues and um, every Monday weekly uh, the first uh, series that we've done is actually based on I feel like a librarian I've just got stacks <laughs> of books around me it's based on this book by Alistair McGrath which is such an amazing title called Deep Magic Dragons and Talking Mice and it's kind of an introduction to some of Lewis's key thoughts so we look at things like the meaning of life his friendships um, how Narnia came about, the art of apologetics, education. We touch on things like the problem of pain and the hope of heaven. Um, so that's the first series. And then the second series that I've literally just finished recording with Alistair McGrath, which is incredible. I mean, he is so brilliant. Um, it was on Mere Christianity, which was a total joy for me because, yeah, like I said, I got to read it for the first time um, and just take in all of the beauty. So we we sort of spend the first episode looking at the background behind how Mere Christianity came about, the fact that it was radio talks and all of that. And then we sort of delve into some of the key issues. And obviously, eight podcasts is, is not enough to do justice to Mere Christianity, as you guys well know, because you've done way more than that on it. Um, and then we haven't recorded anything else yet um, and I will be going on maternity leave. So um, I'm hoping to try and record some while I'm on maternity leave. So I'll be even more of an amateur, one who loves but isn't necessarily good at it. Um, and one of the things I'm really keen to do is a whole series on women. And C.S. Lewis, Lewis's relationship to women. So, you know, Mrs. Moore and Joy Davidson and some of the kind of key academics that he came into contact with and his mother, who obviously died when he was little and was such a kind of significant influence in his life. Um, and then perhaps even some of the sort of female, strong female characters like Lucy. 
Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit. Um, we're really open to suggestions. So if anyone has any thoughts about what we could be doing in the next few series, then do let us know. Um, because like I said, Alistair McGrath is a wealth of knowledge. And even if someone wants to know something super niche, then um, I'm sure he will know that. So yeah. <laughs> Have you read the book by Carolyn Curtis? We had her on the show a little while ago. She wrote a book called Women in C.S. Lewis, and it was really uh, a collection of writers, uh, and they each wrote chapters related to Lewis's relationships with women, women in his literature, and seeing how all of that develops. Oh, I am going to write that down. No, I haven't. That will be... <laughs> Maybe she should host that that episode, that <laughs> series. That would be brilliant. And, and even it's even got a chapter from one of our other co-hosts, Andrew Lazo. So the, the quality varies, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, just to wrap up this interview, could you recap where people go to find out more about the podcast and uh, also explain how listeners can enter the competition that you're currently running? Yeah, sure. So we are currently running a competition. Hodder Books, who um, published quite a lot of Alistair's books around C.S. Lewis, have very kindly given us a few free copies of Alistair's books. And if you share our trailer or one of our episodes or just sort of shout about the podcast in any way and include um, the link to our website, which is just cslewispodcast.com and also the hashtag cslewispodcast, uh, then then we will look at everyone who's sort of tagged that hashtag and we will pick random winners and you can hopefully be in with a chance to win some goodies by Alistair McGrath about C.S. Lewis. Um, but yeah, if you just go to cslewispodcast.com, you'll find out everything you need to know about the podcast. And and as you said, we're part of Unbelievable, um, which is part of Premier Christian Radio. It's an apologetic show, a brilliant apologetic show. And there's lots of great stuff going on in Unbelievable as well. So you can find out more about that as well as the podcast if you just go to cslewispodcast.com. Well, listeners, all of that information will also be in the show notes. So check back next time. Cheers. Cheers.